Hey everybody, it's Ron Caps. There's a lot of really good questions I've always wanted to ask other drivers, even drivers I competed with and against. This is a perfect opportunity for me to play a reporter and just have some fun, ask some questions that maybe they don't ask on a TV show. So what better place than here on Comp Plus to have a little fun with some other drivers? Somebody I want to get to know a lot better. I know a lot of you probably wonder who really is Sean Langdon. I don't even know. Now listen, I know for a fact, years ago, you were one of the kids that came out here with when you were in school. I mean, your dad raced, but I, I think I've heard you tell stories about coming out and making me feel old by telling me that you came and got my autograph or hung out when you were a little kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, like, when I kind of really started to remember, you were running the, the school funny car. Um, but I think I even have maybe a couple autographs back when you had the top fuel car. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Copenhagen as well. Yeah, but I remember, yeah, they, they had the, the school experience thing, I think, or what do they call that? Yeah. Yeah, but I remember I was always trying to sneak into that thing when I wasn't even 18, but I just wanted to say I went in there. They always put the skull girls at the back, and then they tease everybody because you had to be 18 to get in. Well, maybe that's what I was trying to get in. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have a fake ID yet? No, not yet. No, I think I was probably only 12. Maybe that's why I didn't get in either. When did you grow the beard? When I was 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you didn't have to age out of the juniors when you had the beard? Well, they kicked me out because I had a beard. Yeah. It's because you won a lot, probably. Well, no. Actually, I mean, I would, I'd still like to go back and run them now that they they, uh, they made the age group you know, look quite a bit uh, older or whatever. But, um, yeah, I mean, I raced until I was 17 years old and then made a transition into Super Comp and kind of went from there. So th have you been – you haven't driven a junior comp, right? No, I haven't. No, no. I think we ought to get together and do a little race in those junior comps. We, my, my son Caden, we did a little thing, and, and I know it, it's pretty new class, but we went out and I sat in it and watched those kids make runs, and man, that seems like pretty fun, especially if you don't manually shift it, or if you do manually shift and don't let it go automatic, that'd be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? Well, I think it'd be fun if we get a couple of the top fuel drivers together. Funny cars, too. What? Top fuel funny car? Of, of course. Oh now, oh, now you're a dragster guy, a guy, and, guy, and now we're, you know, we're well, my hands are clean. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the first hell of a dragster driver, right? Listen, I'm, I'm going to tell a little story real quick to you. I might have told you, when Snake, and I drove for Snake and Dixon, and I were teammates, Snake has an, an affliction with, he just loves funny cars, right? We all know that. But he used to come over, and he almost made fun of Dixon at times because he'd say, man, let me tell you something. You come back from your run with your nice little clean gloves and your clean suit. You, when's the last time you got in the shower and you blew clutch dust out in the shower? And didn't I tell you that when you jumped in the funny car? I remember you told me, you said, uh, your Q-tips are going to go black, and then you're going to find clutch dust in places you didn't think you could find clutch dust. And when you blow your nose in the shower, what comes out? It, all black. Black we, clutch dust, boogered up. Yeah. It's the it, best, isn't it? I, I couldn't believe, I mean, there would be times where I'd be like, get out of the shower and I feel like I'm, right, I'm cleaned up. We got all the clutch dust off. Then it's like the next morning I go to put socks on and my toes are black. Like, how do I get clutch dust on my toes? But yeah, I mean, it's it, funny car's fun, man. It, it, it was a cool experience for two years. I know I'm going to miss it. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of good good drivers in the class, a lot of guys I grew up idolizing. So it was, it was neat to race against, you know, you and, and John and, and and some of the guys um it's, it, it's like poker though it, didn't i you and ij and i were talking about that on your podcast you know i started top fuel but it just seems like funny car from the get-go and i went in when i went in it was hoffman and it was etchels and it was epler and force of course and it was battle of roll it in whatever you wanted it was such a different scenario than the, the top fuel guys is it still that way in the funny car class? Yeah. yeah. Compared to Top Fuel? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Top Fuel, like, you know, from when I started, it was always kind of a... I don't know if you call it a gentleman's agreement, but you, everybody just kind of stayed shallow, and it kind of got into like a, a, a flicker fest where everybody was kind of like puffing their chest a little bit, like, oh, did you see my flicker? I got three flickers on the bulb. And then, uh, you, so I kind of carried that mentality in a funny car, and I'm thinking like, oh, you see my flicker? And then it's like, you got a couple guys, oh, did you see me deep stage, and I treat your ass about it, you know? <laughs> but it, it's, it's neat. I, I like, see, for me, I like the, the strategic side of it. I like the, the fact of, it doesn't matter if they go in deep. I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's it's 
nobody likes people going in deep because you don't like to be the guy to lose on a hole shot and have to go back to your sponsor and say, well, I lost on a hole shot, but technically it wasn't because he got a couple hundreds and this and that. And it's just, it's too dang confusing. So at the end of the day, you just eat the bullet and say, I lost on a hole shot. It's just kind of a pride thing. Uh, but I like the strategic part about it, uh, where you're racing a guy and it's kind of like, all right, what's he going to do? You try to outsmart the other guy that you're racing. You try to think about like, okay, he's he's kind of a uh, straight up racer. So you just race him straight up. This guy maybe takes a little time. All right, maybe I'll speed him up or maybe I'll slow it down or maybe I'll try to go in a little deeper before he does. I like that kind of stuff. I like thinking about stuff like that when you're in the lanes and, and trying to prepare. I think that may be the bracket racing side of me. That was my next question. JR and I talked yesterday about it, and he's still so upset at himself about how he let force get to him and flicker the light, shut it off, and it got to him. And we all know he's going to do it or somebody else will do it, but the fact that you pride yourself in not being taken advantage of when it when it happens, he's still so mad. It's uh, you got to let it go. And it used to happen to me when I was younger in a rookie years. But speaking of the bracket stuff, I'm sure that translates a lot over to what you do. You talk about flickering, and, and for the kids at home, we're talking about staging so shallow that you are so shallow that it actually flicks the light. And I, I see a lot of junior dragsters do it, and they're really good at it. It's almost like how many times can you get it to flicker is the more you can puff your chest out, right? You get it, blink, 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 and then it's on. So, to, okay, you do all these million-dollar races, big bracket stuff. Who are the top three baddest hombres bracket racers in the country, if you had to name three right now? Well, um, you look at... Uh you know, there's a guy, Johnny. Three, the three that you hate when you sign up for one of those on your off weekend and you see the entry list and you go, oh, man. Uh, uh, Johnny Ezel, um, he's he's probably had the most success, uh, most money won. Um, then it's it, you kind of look at uh, you know the last couple years, uh, but Luke Bagaki, um, that guy he's he's tough. Uh, he's he's a, a teacher of the game. Um, but then a guy that I've always struggled uh, racing against, but I love racing because the guy's one of the best racers of all time. But uh, Peter Biondo, uh, he it just seems like the guy races five times a year. And and he wins four of them, but he's in five finals. And then he puts Bortosi in a car, and they go win everywhere else. Yeah, so I, that's off the top of my head. Um, but, you know, really in bracket racing today, there's so many tough racers. Um, I mean, like last year, I went to a 500 grand to win race up in Michigan, and I believe it was 716 entries for first round. And it's just, it's an endurance race now anymore. There's so many cars that do it. There's such huge uh, money up for grabs. Um, so, I mean, you're running at 8 in the morning, and then you may make your next run at 2 in the afternoon, your next run's 9 o'clock, and your next run's 3 in the morning, and then you go to bed for 4 hours, and you're up the next morning to make another run, so there's a lot of things that I'm really learning from the bracket racing side that I feel like translates over into the top field side of just kind of learning about yourself and your, your do's and don'ts of, of uh, kind of what gets your adrenaline going, and, and what do you eat or drink that maybe might make you tired, and there's so many things that kind of, I believe, that I've learned from that that translates into this. Alright, because I'm intrigued by that. I'd love to watch a, a live stream of a weekend or a day with you and whoever else can can we see somehow next big race you do on an off weekend somehow get somebody to go along and document that week i'm curious because i want to know and we've been asking people what to eat and not eat so these kids coming up no i mean force is still coffee and donuts but you know we all we all think of ahead and how can we be best in the car when we get in because we're hired drivers and speaking of the deep stage and all that it's tough for us hired guns because you're dealing with a guy that drives and owns his own car. He doesn't have to. He signs a check to the crew chief. He doesn't have to answer to the crew chief like we do, right? Exactly. And that's, you know, that's part of the sport, though. I mean, you got people that pay to drive and you got people that get paid to drive. And um, so, you know, we really pride ourselves on, you know, being able to do a good job inside the car. But I think that's kind of goes along with um, you, you're a little more critical on yourself for your mistakes because you know that you may not have nothing to fall back on you know if if, uh, if things don't go your way so that's i think there's a lot of things that that uh you know we really try to go above and beyond as, as far as like stuff like that we were talking about you know eating and, and getting your mind right I, I i believe that there's a lot uh mind plays a big part in what we do uh especially on the starting line i think there's a lot of uh 
you know, I really try to focus on a lot of positivity thoughts, you know, a lot of things getting into the car of telling yourself what you can do, what you, instead of what you might not be able to do, uh, not focus on who you're driving, not worried about that sort of thing, but uh, trying to do things to the best of your abilities. But also I think there's a certain level of intensity that you kind of have to get inside the cockpit where um, not too much, where you get over anxious, you start kind of getting in like a twitch mode, but also getting up to that level. I feel like for me, when I'm, my adrenaline's going and I've just maybe, you know, whatever it may be, have a cup of monster, have a can of Mellow Yellow or, or something, you know, sugary that kind of gets your, your stuff going. And then you're in the car, kind of like a taking your deep breaths, kind of calming yourself down. That's where I feel like I'm at my optimum. But the, the mornings where I wake up and I'm tired and I'm like, okay, I got to pound all this coffee and pound all these, you know, donuts or whatever it may be like, like, for, you know, but then you're trying to get yourself up and you're sitting in a car trying to get yourself amped up. I don't feel like you're at your, your, your maximum. Be worse, huh? I feel like you're worse because you're almost trying too hard. Um, you know, but what works for some people works for some people. But I, I feel like, you know, some mornings, yeah, you may drink a cup of coffee and, and that is kind of what gets you going. But then you may be hungry and you go eat yourself a cheeseburger. Next thing you know, you want to go take a nap and you're 20 slower on the tree. And then you're like, ah, don't do that again. So I think there's so many things that, you know, we learned throughout the years. Uh, but like I said, the racker racing, I feel like that I really utilize a lot of that stuff to kind of, you know, we make two runs a day in a dragster, but I go brack race and I make 10 runs in a day. So it's kind of like, you know, are, are naps necessary? How much sleep is necessary? Is too much sleep, you know, going to hurt you? Is not enough sleep going to hurt you? So there's a lot of things that uh, I think, I think that I kind of try to translate into this. Good. That's good to know. Dad's good? Healthy? Dad's great. Uh, you know, obviously not out here this weekend. He's, uh, trying to not not get a part of the uh, the old coronavirus and everything going around right now but yeah no he's doing great uh you know obviously uh you know went through a lot of stuff last year and um you know it's kind of uh you know he's 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 powering through it he's doing good, good. Yeah. Uh, we hope to see him out soon i know he, he this this probably make him feel better than ever to have him out here hanging out so we hope to see him soon all right change directions a little bit music wise you're kind of a good big music guy right yeah, I mean, I, I'm a kind of a little bit of everything, really. Okay, what's your go? If you if you're having one of those days you talked about and you didn't get good sleep, and you're trying to get yourself up a little bit, and you put something on before you get in the car, what's your go-to? Make sure it gets you rise and up for the occasion song or ma or band. You know, and this kind of go kind of go a little bit against what probably the majority of the people do. It's actually kind of weird, but it's what gets me going. Um, it's not necessarily always music. So a lot of times I go to YouTube. A lot of times I'll go to, I'll, it's it's different. So I go to YouTube, I go to, uh, I, what really kind of gets me going is, is guys like Conor McGregor, guys like Floyd Mayweather, um, at their press conferences, their, their uh, like when they win their fights, their, their speeches, their motivational stuff. Um, walkouts. The, the walkout stuff. I, I think that stuff, um, you know, I, I look at guys, uh, I don't, I wouldn't consider myself a bandwagon guy, but I definitely follow people like Tom Brady's, you know, I'm a big fan of him because he wins a lot. Why does he win a lot? I want to know why he wins a lot. What does he do to get ready? What does he do to train? What is his mental mindset? Um, and I, Conor McGregor's, Floyd Mayweather's, uh, you know, I look at a lot of those guys and I, and I just kind of look at their mentalities of, of what it takes for them to uh, get into those moments and, and what their mindsets are in those moments and and I, I kind of feel like I watch that and I kind of feel like those are the things that get me really motivated. That's interesting man because my son Caden he's 18 and YouTube's everything. He watches other people play video games on YouTube nonstop. Yeah I, I do the same thing. I mean there will be some times you know like I'll uh, I'll watch uh, you know whatever Madden or, or Fortnite or whatever uh, uh, you know right now I'm kind of all into this racing stuff so I try to you know YouTube as much as I can on his eye racing stuff because I'm thinking like, I right, you know, hey, I could get in these cars and you know I could battle pretty good, and then I go out there and get my ass kicked by some kid, by, by some kid from Brazil that I've never know, don't know his name, and uh, I mean I learned a lot. Actually, I learned a lot in the first week that I had this eye racing thing. I learned that you can't uh, speed on pit road. 
They don't like that. No. You get docked. You got to come back in and stop I'm and go. Flag first race, and then so I get out of my black flag, and so I gas it and go, and I roll out of the pits, and I go right, I go right into turn one, and I'm racing. Black, black flag. Black flag. Come back to the pits, and I'm like, what kind of crap is this? But it, I like it. I just I like racing, man. I think that, that like I said, it's a mental mindset, keeping your mind right, keeping your mind in in the race mode at all times. Well, we get to Epping. Let's all make a trip to iRace, and I've been I beta tested with them in the early days, and I had them out actually on YouTube. You can find a, a thing they did and they put out, and I had uh, I think Ace back then talk about the mechanics of the car with them. It might have been Tobler, but um, we're working on getting a drag race game, they, either a dragster or a funny car, something to start with with basic adjustments, and they're all for it. So maybe we'll make a trip out and we can see if we can get iRacing guys. Steve and all those guys are big drag race fans, so let's see when we work on it. I, I mean, I feel I'm, I'm all for that. I was the guy on the old NHRA drag racing game before the PlayStation on, on the computer yep. uh, on the, what was it, Nitro Sim or something like that yep. they had. Yep. So racing online, I, it's funny because I... On the applet. Remember, you had to go to that applet. Yes, exactly. Oh. So actually, I remember uh, Morgan Lucas and I, <laughs> we would actually, you know, maybe, you know, call in sick after lunch. Uh, you know, instead of going back to school, we call in sick and and uh, we go back to his house and we go, we just sit there and like they put on races at night and we go back, you know, whatever race they're going to do at the, on the, at the night or whatever, we'd go there and we'd go testing. Like he'd make runs, he'd be the driver, I'd be the crew chief. And, and then, you know, we'd flip flop and we don't, I mean, we had, man, we put hours into that game. You, I helped design that, man. Yeah, just fun times. And when it finally came out, I was so happy that these nerds in an office were able to actually you make a car sound and feel like it is to drive because that game back then was one of the most realistic sounding funny car rides yeah and i thought it was cool like for me you know i and especially you, you go like the weeks before pomona or whatever where i always came out but it you'd go and you'd race these games and then it's like you'd hop in people's cars and i'd pretend like all right i'm ron caps here and i'm i'm racing and it and you know i i just man i loved it i love the experience of it but it kind of it puts you in those moments those moments that that we're very lucky to have where we're up on the, the starting line and you're, you're racing and the adrenaline's going and you look out and you see all the fans and, and it's those moments that, that it's so hard to describe but you can kind of get it a little bit in those video games where you know your adrenaline's going you're like oh man I got it you're running this guy's running pretty fast I got to cut a light on him or you know maybe deep stage to throw him off a little bit but I think you know, it's, it's the best I think it's the best interaction way to Instead of us describing it to the fans, which is very hard to describe, the best way to show them is to show them off a video game. And I bragged all the time. NASCAR elevated itself so much when it came out with the first video game and from then on. And I tried to tell all the, the suits at NHRA at the time. They didn't get it until they saw the numbers and the money that video games were. So it's good. We're, we'll uh, we'll work on that for you fans at home. But oh, yeah. hope everybody got to know Sean Langdon a little better. I know I did just now. I know I learned some cool stuff. that I, Now that I don't have to race you, I can come over and talk talk to you about <laughs> watching YouTube stuff. That's interesting, and I, I love that. So uh, that, that was a lot of insight. So you look good in yellow. You look thinner. Is yellow thinner? Is that what it is? You tell me. Are you thinner, or is it yellow thinner? I mean, I try to go thinner, but the thing is, if you... Horizontal stripes? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what it is, yeah. It's my good angle. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. It was fun. See you guys.